once described as the crown jewel of Netflix, it's safe to say this series has lost its shine. But then the wind changed. While the final season was still the most viewed show the week that it dropped, the show's ratings have lost the spark when compared with previous seasons. Let's take a quick look at what it is that helped make and break this once highly acclaimed historical drama. As mentioned, part one of the final installment of The Crown dropped mid-November. It was the most watched show on its first week with 11 million views globally. But they do do. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, this was primarily fueled by interest in Europe where it took the number one spot in opening week, unlike in the States and Canada. But even as it became the most viewed show in the UK, what has a lot of people talking is the fact that it certainly didn't have the views most were expecting, especially for season six being the show's big finale. So in this video essay, we're going to take a look at first a breakdown of the numbers comparing the show's ratings and views for its many different seasons, and then we'll break down the three big mistakes that led to the show's demise just when it seemed to have reached unstoppable success. As we can see here on Rotten Tomatoes, Seasons were incredibly successful with 88% approval ratings, 89%, 90 and 96%. By season 5, we see The Crown losing its fresh certificate, but by season 6, it's dropped to a whooping 53 and it's officially a rotten tomato. Look at Rating Graph. We see the average rating of episodes definitely going down, but when we look at total votes, which shows how many people actually watch the show, the downward trend is even more apparent. Let's take a quick look at Metacritic, see a very similar trend with the seasons, but then seasons five and six, we see a very considerable decrease in the approval ratings to 65 and 61. So what went wrong? What did it take to completely shatter the show? fan based at what seemed to be a frenzied peak of interest following season four. Firstly, public perception of objectivity. The Crown quickly earned popularity and critical acclaim for its historical value, with fans and critics alike appreciating the attention to detail, accuracy, and historical context in the show's dramatized retelling of significant events in the British royal family's history. This massive success, depending on the sea of consultants the show's production relied on for historical accuracy and details. John F. Kennedy from historians, to former palace staff, to friends and people who had been close to the events portrayed in the show. As the events covered in the show got progressively closer to the present day, departures or disagreements from some of these consultants started to make the news. In 2020, Patrick Jepson, Princess Diana's former private secretary, publicly voiced his disagreements with the portrayal and exited his association with the show. A year later, however, when Princess Diana's friend Jimmy McCann also exited the show, she called out the show creator, saying that season five was not as respectful of the memory of Princess Diana as she would have hoped and rescinded her contributions and credit as she did not want to be associated with the show at all. No comment. Can told the Sunday Times, It was really important to me that the final years of my friend's life be portrayed accurately and with compassion as has not always happened in the past. While these departures and disagreements didn't have an immediate effect, they did eventually harm the public expectation, perception, and anticipation for the last season, and substantially altered the larger perception of accuracy that had become a stable. Number two, poor critical acclaim. The lavish, regal, impeccable standards of high quality were kind of dropped in the last seasons, and we can see this in the drastically different responses from the public and critics Alive. Let's start with the critic reviews first. The series has consistently received recognition for its quality and contributions to the television landscape, with multiple Emmys, BAFTA and Golden Globe Awards in major categories, from its unforgettable performances to production design and overall excellence in television. But perhaps most importantly, excellence in writing and direction. No matter how exquisite the costume design or how pitch perfectly the performances match real-life people and specific events, a historical drama collapses under its own weight if the storytelling doesn't make it credible. And the reviews for the last season of the show have been a bit. Run Tomatoes went from describing the first season as a top-notch production worthy of its grand subject with lavish cinematography to concluding that it's hard to shake the feeling the series has lost some of its luster by season 5 and finally deciding that the final season often feels like a rain extended past its prime. And I think all the negative reviews from critics can be summed up by the review published. So The Garden published a review titled So Bad 
that, it's basically an out-of-body experience, which describes the script as the very definition of typing, not writing. Perhaps the worst part in the reviews by far Bar is the ghost Diana coming back from the dead to appear to Charles and Twin Elizabeth. Natural. And you still blush. And here's where it gets so cringy, I need to add gagging trigger warnings. Apparently, the ghost of Diana comes back to visit not her kids, but her ex-husband, whom, by the way, she allegedly believed had been planning to kill her for months before her death, something that was not covered in the show. And in the episode, ghost Diana thanks Charles for being so raw, broken, and handsome. This is madness. And then she adds, wait for it. I'll take that with me. Ew. Then goes on to give a broken water kiss, patriotic speech to the queen, telling her, you've always shown us what it meant to be British. Maybe it's time to learn too. Giving her blessing and even encouraging the queen to, you know, put out some ER fires and get candid with the press for the sake of the nation. There are those who say that the monarchy has no relevance to modern British life. But of course, it's not just the critics. The public response on Twitter, now X, has also been hilariously bad. Fans are not okay. Mm -hmm. Number three. And finally, this was the right show at the wrong time. Because what's surprising isn't that the show failed in the eyes of viewers or how accurately it portrayed the most controversial chapter in the royal family's modern history, but the fact that they chose to portray those recent years at all. A lot of what the earlier seasons shed some light on wouldn't have been possible had it aired when it was still fresh in people's minds. Let's take King Edward VIII, for example. I'm not talking about the abdication to the throne in 1936. I'm talking about his close ties to none other than Adolf Hitler and the Nazi movement. A lot of draws were dropped at the idea of former king of the UK giving the Nazi salute to none other than Hitler himself. And this was only months after his abdication. That's right, season two shocked viewers by showing a former king posing up to Hitler going as far as to feed the Nazis crucial military information in an effort to help them defeat the UK forces and completely betray his own countrymen in the process. All of these things were for the most part far removed from the public consciousness, at least in our present day. Episode 6 in Season 2 follows Queen Elizabeth, played by Claire Foy, as she uncovers these facts and then Prime Minister Churchill as he tries to cover it all up. These papers must never see the light of day, Winston. Ever. Now, it's hard to imagine this episode would have been possible back in 1957, which is when the documents became public. Churchill and the palace reportedly fought really hard to keep the documents secret. And even when the Duke's alliances with the Nazis had been made public and were detailed in cables, telegrams, and other documents, media coverage at the time, unsurprisingly, went on to cast a lot of doubt on the validity of the documents and downplayed them as mere gossip. So it's almost impossible to imagine season two of The Crown having aired near 26 years after the end of the Second World War, which would have been back in the 70s. Or worse, Freedom. right when the documents were first made public, Only 12 years after the end of World War II. There's nothing to stop the American government publishing if the British government won't. Is it realistic to believe the controversy of the Diana years could have been fleshed out in 2023? Bringing attention to one of the most controversial moments in recent history, only 26 years following the death of Princess Diana is no easy task, particularly at a time when anti-royal and abolitionist sentiment is at an all-time high in the UK and the Commonwealth. Some might argue a negative portrayal of the royal family could have easily contributed to political stability or even a constitutional crisis in the UK. Very quickly become a major constitutional crisis. The real crime here isn't yeah. that the show creators skipped over critical moments of Diana's life and death, but rather the fact that they touch on these difficult years at all. And to make things worse, the cheesy cringiness of things like the apparent ghost of Diana just makes the entire series lose credibility. On Twitter, now X, many fans have questioned the actual involvement of the palace in the making of the show, which also has now made viewers question whether previous seasons of the show might have been a little more flowery than Joe Public originally realized. After all, the most damning revelations revolved around one member of the family who had abdicated the throne and left no present-day descendants. Well, perhaps you should take a leaf out of your late brother's book. Overall, it's safe to say the last two seasons were probably a big mistake that will unfortunately forever change the public perception of the show as a whole. But don't take my word for it, and if you watched this far, do let me know what you think of The Crown. I'd be happy to do a follow-up, including your thoughts, especially after part comes two out on December 16th. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more, and as always, take good care of yourselves. <laughs>